So the fear of disappointing people comes from two places. So the fear of disappointing people, we've talked about one place that it comes from, which is making sure not to create a scene and making people like you. That's one lane that most of us have, and I'm going to tell you a story in a minute about how you can manage this. The second lens, and I got to give credit to my business partner, Mandy, for this, is that so many of us have this perfectionism gene. And the reason why we're perfectionists is we're trying to insulate ourselves from criticism. That if you get it perfect, no one will give you feedback. If you get it right, nobody's going to criticize you. If you do it perfect, then no one will be able to attack you. And the problem with that, and that's just another side of the same coin, which is the fear of disappointing people. You're managing not disappointing people, not by lying and not by being codependent, but by actually trying to be a perfectionist so that nobody criticizes you. So let me tell you a story about the fear of disappointing people in my own life because this is the biggest trigger in my life. I mean, it goes back to being in fourth grade, right? It's there. And this is another thing. I, I literally have to remind myself of this, everybody, every single day. You cannot remove the things that trigger you. You can't. If you've been doing a pattern since fourth grade, there will be things for the rest of your life that will trigger that pattern to come up. But you can always choose not to repeat the pattern. So you'll be triggered and be afraid that you're gonna disappoint somebody. That's real, that's normal, it's natural, it's part of being a human being. I think it's interwoven into every relationship where you love somebody. But you don't have to behave the way that you always behaved when you're nervous about disappointing somebody. So let me give you a dumb story, you ready? When my husband and I got married, my father gave us this really incredible gift. He gave us an antique pool table. I grew up in Muskegon, Michigan, where Brunswick was founded. And my dad has a hobby of going to garage sales and estate sales and buying old dilapidated pool tables and then he restores them. So when Chris and I got married, he bought us an old dilapidated pool table from the same era as our house, which is the 1870s. He restored the whole thing and then recently he and I rented a U-Haul and we drove this sucker from Muskegon, Michigan to Boston, Massachusetts. My dad and I took a road trip. We get there and we assemble the pool table in what used to be our playroom. Fast forward three or four years, the speaking business takes off, my business starts to grow, we have people that work for us, and my kids are older, we don't need a playroom, we need an office. The pool table is in the middle of this thing. For the first two years of having the office, we kept the pool table there. Why? Because I didn't want my dad to be disappointed, because I love him. Now, he visits our house twice a year for two or three days with my mom. And I kept this thing occupying a third of our office for two years. And then I realized I'm being ridiculous. I'm being absolutely ridiculous. Now here's the thing. Will he be disappointed if I take the pool table down? Absolutely, definitely. There are always going to be things that you do, decisions that you have to make in your life, in your business, for your family, that will disappoint other people. It's unavoidable. But the fact that he's going to be disappointed should never be the reason that I don't do something that is aligned with my values. Now, let's take it a step further. When you make a decision that is likely going to disappoint people or that does, still make the decision because it's your life. There's nothing worse than when you start to rob your future and your life and your happiness because you're so focused on other people. However, if you love people, you can still take care of them when you make that decision. So let me go back to the example of the pool table. So I knew I was gonna take it down. I knew my father was gonna be disappointed. I was disappointed. I don't have a big house. So I don't, you know, I don't have the room for a huge pool table. I don't have a finished basement like a lot of people. I don't have like a cool garage game room thing like I don't, I just don't have it. I called him first and said, I need to talk to you about something. You know the pool table, I love the pool table. Dad, my business is growing so much, I actually need an office. And, oh great, it'll be great in the office. And I'm like, well, <laughs> yeah it would, except I have you know, three or four people showing up and we gotta put some desks in there for now. 
even went down, well, you could put a piece of plywood, and they could work on the pool table, and then they could do the thing, and then the thing. And now my heart is racing because I don't want to disappoint my dad. And now he's fighting for the, and I had to just say for me, dad, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to hire professional movers in the pool table business to disassemble this with love and care. We are gonna store it beautifully. When I either get a full-time office offsite, or I build a barn, or I build a different house, this will have its own beautiful room dedicated to you. So we had this beautiful conversation. Now, was he disappointed? Absolutely. When they come to the house and visit, which they just did, and they walk into the office, do I feel a pang? You better believe I do. It doesn't matter. That's all normal. I still need to make the decisions that I need to make. And the difference, what's changed, is how I relate to that fear. So instead of what I would do in the past is I would make a decision that doesn't serve me. I'd leave the pool table and then I'd be all about it. I'd leave the pool table as a way to make my dad happy, but it makes me miserable to leave it there because I need the space, right? And then I'd be kind of annoyed and then he'd come and I'd fake play pool because I kind of want to rub, you know, you, know, you know what I'm saying? Like we do all this bull that's not real. And what I've been able to do for myself in some instances when I catch it is to hit it head on and to be authentic and to still take care of people. And what I've also come to learn is that people can be disappointed in you and they still love you. You know, you're never gonna get around this. Everybody in your family is gonna be disappointed with you probably once a day, probably. And you have the ability to retrain how you respond to that trigger that rises up in you where you start to fear that you're disappointing somebody. And the answer really is make the decision that's aligned with your values and the thing that supports you and then take care of the person by being honest and straightforward about it dealing with their disappointment head on because that's really the adult thing to do and that's what you do when you love somebody. The way we've all been handling it, myself included, is manipulation, lying, resentment, withholding, and that doesn't serve anybody.